If you told anyone that the Heat would be in the finals last year when they acquired Jimmy Butler, they would have told you that you're crazy. But here we are. The Heat just beat the Celtics and are set to go against LeBron and the Lakers on Wednesday. What I want to talk about is if the Heat have a chance to win the series, and if so, then how? I'll start off right now by saying that, honestly, I just have a hard time believing LeBron is going to lose after getting to the finals against a team who isn't Golden State, much less with a player as like AD, but let's entertain the idea of an upset. One thing that I feel wasn't recognized enough is the heart and the energy that the Miami Heat play with. I feel like the magnitude of it wasn't even really recognized until the Bucks series and then everybody is like, hold on, in the Celtics series. These guys just play hard all the time and play hard for each other. This is the actual definition of a team. I know a common comparison for this team is the 04 Pistons, and honestly I guess that isn't too far off, but the difference is they aren't facing a young, arrogant Kobe, they're facing LeBron in year 17, who definitely is a much smarter basketball player at this point. But let's get on to the actual basketball stuff. I think the biggest weapons for the Heat are Tyler Hero and Goran Dragic, considering it's going to be KCP and Danny Green and those type of guys guarding them all game. I don't think I have to remind you of the 37 point game Tyler Hero had the other day. He's proven that he can perform on the biggest stage with confidence and he will definitely need that in the finals against a LeBron James led team. This team is locked in on defense and definitely won't make it easy on him. We saw LeBron guard Jamal Murray in the fourth quarter of game four or five, whichever one that was. And I promise you in the finals, if it comes to it, he'll do it. But he's got the complete package. He'll take guys off the dribble, take step backs, take catch and shoot 30 footers. And most importantly, call for the ball when it comes to it. Tonight in game six, you saw him calling for the ball to put the Celtics away late in the fourth. And his team was more looking for him. He's not only been a lethal scorer, but he's towards the top of the heat in assists and rebounds, either in the series or the playoffs, I can't remember. Either way, he's been everywhere. And then there's Goran Dragic, the other guard who's going to give LA an absolute headache. Dragic has been very good for the heat in these playoffs, I think most notably as a scorer. In six of his last 11 playoff games, he scored 22 or more points and pretty efficiently. The Drogic ban pick and roll was lethal against the Celtics, but I doubt it will have the same effect with AD down low, obviously. But when those two are on the court together in the playoffs, they outscore their opponents 7.7 points per 100 possessions. The only other duo that played more minutes and scored more was Jimmy Butler and Bam. Drogic just has to keep steady and get his 20 points while keeping the offense flowing like he has been doing. One thing that does concern me on offense a little bit is Jimmy Butler. He just has to be better on offense. He'll have moments in one half where he's really aggressive and gets to his spots and is able to score or get an open shot for somebody. But then in the next half, he'll go 0 for 4, 0 for 5 or something. Yes, he's been facilitating, getting rebounds, playing good defense, all that kind of stuff. But what happens when guys aren't hitting shots? He didn't even make a three games two through five and only attempted one or two a game. Now, he did get to the free throw lines seven times a game, which needs to maintain itself, especially if he's not hitting or attempting jump shots. Then if guys like Iggy and Crowder can hit open jumpers, they should be good. All this is best case scenario, obviously. Iggy was terrible from three, and Crowder has fallen off a bit in the last few games. And aside from game six, Iggy, you know, sucked from three again. So we'll have to see what happens there, but more on the defensive side of stuff is where things get real interesting. First, I'd like to start with Bam on AD because that is obviously a very important matchup and I think one of the most interesting matchups in the series. I think Bam is physical enough to get AD to settle for those face-up 15-footers he loves. And honestly, if he makes 40% of them, you just gotta swallow it. You saw the Houston series, PJ Tucker was really physical with AD and it discouraged him from putting a shoulder into him and just going for a layup, even though PJ Tucker was 6'5". And you saw a lot more finishing at the rim for AD against Plumlee and Jokic. He also shot a ton of free throws against the Nuggets, 11 a game on 90%, which is crazy. So if Bam can keep AD around 15 feet and just take face-ups, it will go a long way in stopping the Lakers offense. The same kind of plan applies for LeBron too. Get him to settle on jump shots. The Heat have guys like Jimmy Butler, Iguodala, Crowder, who can all rotate on Braun at any given moment, but I don't think any of them are stopping him from barreling to the rim and getting fouled or finding the open guy. 
I mean, at the end of the day, it's LeBron James, and there's not a whole lot you can do about it. If Anthony Davis isn't scoring a bunch and guys aren't hitting shots, he's going to get his 40, 15, and 10, whether you like it or not. But you can at least help yourself out by trying to get him to settle for some jumpers. The Lakers are doing you a favor by having Danny Green, Caruso, and Kuzma suck from three in the playoffs. I mean, Kuzma's been okay, but in the against the Nuggets, Danny Green shot like 32%, I think. Caruso shot 15%, and Kuzma shot his normal 29%. But I don't think you can count on that maintaining itself for the whole finals, right? I mean, if you want to let Danny Green beat you and just double off him to contest LeBron or Anthony Davis, be my guest. But there's not a whole lot of game planning you can do against the Lakers because it's LeBron. The most you can do is try to slow down AD and hope the Lakers haven't found their three-point shooting. But the Heat's threes have to drop too. Because outside of Tyler Hero, there wasn't a ton of that going on against the Celtics. And defensively, Tyler Hero, Goran Dragic, all those guys should theoretically just be on spot-up guys. Sometimes you see the Lakers offense kind of stagnate and guys are just kind of watching LeBron, waiting for him to drive and kick. So that should make it pretty easy because Tyler Hero isn't the strongest defensive player, either is Goran Dragic, so just ha or Duncan Robinson for that matter. But those guys should just be on guys standing in the corner, so that should definitely make it easy on them unless they do start to incorporate some movement in their offense, off-ball screens, all that kind of stuff. So outside of Jimmy Butler and the rotation of guys who are going to try to handle LeBron and AD, it should be kind of easy on them considering there's not a whole lot of movement in the Lakers offense. But the energy and the chip on the shoulder this team plays with, along with the talented team, should make this a very interesting series. A lot of things have to go right for the Heat to win the finals, but I don't think it's impossible.